Hello, good afternoon. <clears throat> Michael Wynn, Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Welcome to the Digital Marketing Video and Podcast, where we talk about digital marketing tactics and strategies to grow your business. Here's a question, guys. This isn't 1980, so why is your marketing still sailing on the love boat? That's a serious question. You know, it's amazing to me that we romanticize and have this nostalgia of things of the 80s. Uh, you know, we have 80s night at, at you know, your, your local uh, hospitality bar restaurant. Uh, we have fun with karaoke around, you know, uh, s stories and, and shows and music from the 80s. It's a lot of fun. But when your marketing strategy and tactic is based on, um, you know, ideas and methodology from the 80s, it's not good. It's really not good. Um, so what does that mean if, if you're really having a, a strategy that was, you know, uh, evident in 1980? Well, you know, I think it really goes back to having this idea that with a single piece of content, a single piece of creative, that you were going to be able to place that creative uh, in front of an audience and have them remember your brand um, or have them, I think at the end of the day, that's really what it was about. I mean, in the 80s, it was all about branding, right? It was all about you know, placing TV commercials at the right place, um, you know, and you were specifically taking strategies of, okay, what were the Nielsen ratings for those shows in the 80s and what demographic was watching that show in the 80s? And then you would try to take that one piece of creative in a, in a 30 second spot um, and give it your best shot, your one shot to reach the, the biggest group uh, if you will. Now, some, you know, uh, advertisers got pretty specific and they had multiple placements of that particular commercial in different ones, but very rarely did they do anything to alter the creative. It was, it was pretty much, you spent 10, 20, 30, $50,000, um, creating a, a high quality commercial, um, to try to reach, you know, people. So again, it's this idea that a single, piece of creative could could really drive home, you know, the message and, and help uh, drive brand awareness. Um, and even to a certain extent, um, you know, billboard advertising uh, was sort of that same methodology that we could have this single piece of creative that could, you know, reach that your target audience with, you know, great impact because it was striking or daring or bold in its design. Um, again, all focused around the idea that you had to put all your money on one piece of creative to get the job done. Well, uh, in 1996, uh, about the time that the love boat went off the air, the internet came around. And what the internet has done over the last couple of decades is allow and provide marketers the opportunity to not have to rely on a single piece of creative, but to actually um, imagine a world, imagine a creative world, a marketing world or strategy where you can actually break down every product, every service that your company offers and then with inside of that particular product or service, look at the different target audience groups and the motivations, the individual motivations within those individual groups and create a piece of creative, visual, video, written, that speaks directly to that motivation and to that person. So now you have the ability to not only move away from and be reliant upon one single piece of creative to try to reach the your audience group, you now have the ability to specifically break down and create a, a very personalized message 
for every single individual and every single motivation behind why they should choose you or why they should choose your product um, when there are many, many different options for them to consider. So I think it's crazy to think about, I mean, that's a huge gamble. I mean, it's, it's almost like literally playing the roulette wheel at Vegas, right? Like you're going to throw out, you know, put your money on, you know, red 27 and, and hope that the roulette wheel hits your number. And if it does, you win big, you know, and so it makes sense. I get that some people still think that's, um, you know, uh, a way to go, but think about it. What you're really kind of gambling on now in, in 2019 uh, is you're going to have some kind of viral sensation. Well, the, 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 the numbers and the, the, the odds of your piece of creating going viral are really slim. Like you have a better chance of, of hitting a five digit lottery number uh, and having a piece of content go viral, um, you know, it, it, that's just what the odds are because we've seen so much, uh, you know, as a result of the internet, you know, cute babies, talking dogs. I mean, just you name it, we've seen so much and it's really hard to surprise us now. Um, you know, but every once in a while something comes along and, you know, viral does happen, but it's like catching lightning in a bottle. So it's not really the best way. And think about this. You're going to pay two, three, four, five, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for that single spot on that premium, you know, if it's a billboard at the best place in, you know, your metropolitan area or your city. I mean, you might pay literally three to four to five to $10,000 per month for one spot in a prime location TV or a prime location billboard. Um, you know, in our market, uh, you know, the best billboards to, to, you know, that are digital, that, you know, really are dynamic, you know, they're going to, they're going to range around 2000 to $2,500. That's in our market area. Well, think about that. You're going to spend that money and hope that in a five second stop at a stoplight or passing by, I'm going to look up and get your one message, your, your one visual that's going to, leave enough of a memory in my mind, make enough of, of an impression in my mind that I'm going to remember that when I get back home, pull into the driveway and pull out my phone, which is absolutely just mesmerizing with all the visuals and eye candy that are on my phone across all the different social media networks and all the different things that I can look at and all the different, uh, you know, uh, things that I can consume. Like, that billboard better be really damn shocking. <laughs> I mean, you to really make a memory um, because you just don't have enough impressions to be able to drive home that message, especially for the return on your investment. Now, you take that and imagine you take that same budget, $2,500, and you then create a dynamic set of creative advertising and we create again, going back to this analogy or this sort of thought process of mapping out, okay, here's all my products, right? And then here's the four or five reasons why someone might want to, to use or purchase product A, product B, product C, right? So now I've got, you know, four examples or four motivations for each one of my four core products or areas. Now I've got 16 different uh, motivations. And then within the motivations, I've got age groups of people who they're going to make their decision differently and they look at the world differently than the next person. So the single mom who's going to pick your product um, is going to respond to creative differently than, you know, say the 40 year old married with, you know, no kids who still might use your product, um, but have a whole different reason as to why and what their motivation is. So now if I have the ability to create that very contextual, individualized, personalized 
creative from a visual standpoint, whether it's video, whether it's a single image, whether it's text, you know, or maybe a combination of all of those, and then be able to take that and break it down and have an entire set running at the same time, but targeting all these different groups, I can literally have a multi-dynamic creative ad campaign deployed for the same cost, but personalized. Why is that important? Think about it, guys. Netflix, Pandora, Hulu, um, YouTube favorites, uh, playlists. Um, our entire lives now are based on my preferences, what I want, the way I want it on the, on the device that I want. So if you're not understanding that that's how society operates and consumes content right now, your marketing strategy is still floating on the love boat and quite frankly, your budget is sinking and it's taking your bottom line down with it. So if you wanna to continue to load up your money and sink it in the ocean, then go ahead and continue to purchase um, those traditional single ad spots and who knows, in 10 years, your company might have to close its doors like you know, many other companies who we hear about in the, in the news day after day who are having to close their doors because they were not smart with their marketing strategy and dollars. So again, the, the second piece is, okay, Michael, I get it. What you're telling me is I need to have creative that, you know, really matches the, the motivations of my target audience. Yes, that's step one. Now, step two is this. In the human decision tree, right, in the process of how we make a decision, we go through a series of stepping on different or climbing up branches of a tree, if you will, to get to the top to make our choice. So, you know, the first thing that we do is we become aware of what's out there, right? We're just finding out what all the different products are, you know, we're shopping around, just to see what's out there. That's the awareness stage, we've talked about that. But then, um, the next thing that, I, that I'm that i going to go through is I'm going through this, this process where I'm considering, I've kind of narrowed it down already, right? You've been through this. You, you narrow it down, you're like, I'm gonna go with either A, B, or C, or I'm gonna go with A or B. And then you have to decide what are the advantages or, be, or benefits between A versus B. Right, and so you make this list, pros and cons, you know, features that it has versus features that it doesn't have. So if we, number one, have this ad creative content that's, that's taking people to these various landing pages or these call to action areas, and, and they're in this sort of very beginning stage of making a decision, well, having the ability, if they leave and they don't take that decision that, that you want them to, right, because they're, they're going into the next stage, which is that consideration stage, then you really have to modify your messaging, you have to modify your creative to follow them in their human decision tree process, what they're going through, right? So that second layer is, okay, you clicked on an ad, you went to the landing page, you saw it, you're like, oh, I didn't know, they offered this, that's great, I'm not ready, I'm out of here. But with retargeting, we have the option then to show you a second series, another sequence in the creative process of, okay, now you know that it's there, now the next time I'm gonna show you a visual piece, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on MSN, Dot com or whether you're on the weather app or eBay or whatever, I'm gonna use retargeting with a different piece of creative that triggers the next part of your decision tree, which is that consideration. And then the next, the page that I take you to is going to have that, that list, whether it's a explainer video, whether it's a bullet point of A versus B benefits, like the content is gonna be no longer centered around, hey, did you know this was available to more in detailed comparison of why this is better, why you'll feel better about this choice, right? And so the content is moving or progressing along with your decision process so that, okay, now I know 
that this is product is there. I'm coming back. Now I know what the benefits are to me compared to the other thing. And now, boom, I'm gonna go ahead and take that action. Guys, this progressive uh, or, or the progression, following the progression of the human decision tree is only available in digital marketing. You do not have the ability. How many times you ever watched um, a, a commercial where you know they, they show you one ad and then 30 seconds later, another ad comes on from the same company, but slightly different? Very rare. What you do see is the same the same commercial repeated twice in you know a, a three minute rotation. You've seen that before, but very rarely do you see a company spend the money uh, in traditional format, especially sort of TV commercial land, to try to bring clients or or follow the human decision tree um, progression with creative. So. Again, that's why so many companies still have their marketing strategy and tactics sailing on the love boat and ultimately about to sink to the bottom of the ocean like the Titanic. So if you don't want your marketing budget to sink in like the Titanic, wake up guys. It is time to understand what contextual creative matched to your target audience means and how to deploy that in a truly effective digital marketing campaign. So I hope you found that uh, interesting, entertaining, and insightful today. That's, that's my goal with each one of these episodes is to provide you with practical, tactical advice to help you improve your digital marketing strategies to help grow your business. Guys, my name is Michael Wynn. I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. I hope you'll join in tomorrow and we'll talk to you later.